tomorrow by Drudy Collum here on Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report, as we turn now to a story out of Austin, Texas, that's shocked social justice activists nationwide. A prominent Austin-based activist named Brandon Darby has revealed he worked as an FBI informant in the 18 months leading up to the Republican convention. Darby's admitted to wearing recording devices at planning meetings and wearing a transmitter embedded in his belt during the convention. He's expected to testify on behalf of the government later this month in the trial of two Texas activists who were arrested at the RNC on charges of making and possessing Molotov cocktails. In a statement, a group of Austin-based activists called the Austin Informant Working Group condemned Darby. The group says, quote, the emerging truth about Darby's malicious involvement in our communities is heartbreaking and utterly ground-shattering to those of us who are closest to him. The statement goes on to raise suspicions Darby may have gone beyond spying on the accused activists, but in fact, Act encouraged and provoked them into breaking the law. But in an open letter to the activist community, Darby maintained he only acted to prevent violent actions by a small group that he says would have undermined the cause of social justice. Darby writes, quote, I strongly stand behind my choices in this matter. When people act out of anger and hatred and then claim their actions were part of a movement for somehow tied to the struggle for social justice only after being caught, it's damaging to the efforts of those who do give the, of themselves to better this world. The majority of the activists who went to St. Paul did so with pure intentions and simply wanted to express their disagreements with the Republican Party. It's unfortunate that some use the group as cover for intentions that the rest of the group did not agree with or knew nothing about. I made the choice to have my identity revealed and was well aware of the consequences for doing so. I know that the temptation to silence or ignore the voice of someone who you strongly disagree with can be overwhelming in matters such as this one. I have confidence there will be a few people interested in discussion and in better understanding views different from their own, especially from one of their own. My sincere hope is that the entire matter results in better understanding for everyone, he wrote. Well, Brandon Darby has been involved in several activist groups, his best known as a founder of the New Orleans based group Common Ground Relief, which he helped start after Hurricane Katrina. In this clip from a Common Ground produced documentary, he describes a community rebuilding project in New Orleans. The community center, it's really going to be an adolescent center. It's going to focus on, on young men and women. And, um, so that's what the space is going to be. We are gutting homes, but the things we're fixing up are daycares, community centers, churches. Um, everything in that place is going to come out. All of the furniture, all of the fixtures, all of everything that was submerged needs to be removed. Um, they've gutted out the community center. Um, and now it's ready for uh, minor electrical repair uh, and then insulation and sheetrock. Uh, and then it'll be, you know, pretty much ready to go. We asked Brandon Darby to appear on the program, but he's declined our request, citing the upcoming trial at which he'll testify. Today, we'll hear from several people who've known and worked with Brandon Darby. We're joined in Austin, Texas, by three guests. Lisa Fithian is with the Austin Informant Working Group, a longtime organizer and activist. She participated in organizing around the RNC protests in St. Paul, as well as with Common Ground Relief Collective in New Orleans. We're also joined by Carly Dixon, a member of the Austin People's Legal Collective. Also in Austin, we're joined by Joe England. He's a longtime family friend of Brandon Darby's, who's also involved in progressive causes in Austin. He's come out in support of Brandon Darby uh, since he has revealed his involvement in government spying. And when we called Brandon Darby, he said we should speak to Joe England. We're going to begin with Lisa Fithian. Your response to this news that has been breaking over the last few months. Well, I think this community has really um, been reeling as a result of this news. We feel sickened. We feel traumatized. We feel as if somebody that we thought actually had good intentions and cared for this community has been a lie. And I mean, our greatest concern is, you know, that, you know, the, the statement that Brandon made rings so hollow because this wasn't a situation of him intervening at the last moment to stop violence and prevent people from being hurt. We've seen through these documents, and we know from his experience, that he has provoked people in the past to—or encouraged people to do similar things. 
and he's been very disruptive. And I think that it, we've also seen that he's been doing this for at least February 2007, if not longer. So a lot of his statement rings hollow and is just a continuation of the lie that this man's been living for we don't know how many years. Lisa Fethian, I just want to understand, are you saying you think he's a provocateur, not just an informant? I have no question that he's a provocateur. Um, I mean, I've worked with Brandon for a long time, and everywhere that Brandon has worked, there has been discord, um, tension, um, aggression. Um, we, we know that, you know, the interesting thing is that now that we know for sure, more and more stories are starting to emerge about what Brandon has asked people to do in the past. Um, so, what I, the more I find about these young men as well, like it's clear what? to me that, like what? I, well, that, I mean, they are two young men from Midland, Texas, who are angry at our government, who wanted to learn about organizing and they wanted to make a difference in this world. They are not that experienced. And they were very impressionable. Um, and when you have somebody like Brandon, who has some national notoriety, um, he's, uh, they were starstruck. And again, based on the documents, and I know Carly will talk more about this, these documents make it very clear that he was leading these young men down a road that unfortunately got them into a situation that it, they are now facing very serious consequences, years in prison, as a result of um, the work of Brandon Darby. And what evidence do you have that Brandon Darby encouraged them, uh, for example, while they're being charged with possessing or attempting to use Molotov cocktails? Well, the evidence is in the FBI documents. And again, I would like Carly to speak to those a little bit more clearly. But when you look at the profile of the young men, when you look at Brandon's history and record, and when you look at the documents which reveal, um, again, his, uh, his meeting with them at the coffee shop he hangs out with, him training them in martial arts to engage the police, you know, it's, it's, you see this evolving or an escalation. And I think that this case is actually very important to the government, and that's part of why they, this happened. And, you know, at some point we need to look at the escalation of the FBI at the RNC and Homeland Security, all the agencies. Um, and we believe they've tried to create situations that would lead to, to cases like Brad and David's in order to try and terror, paint this whole movement as a terrorist movement. And it's just inaccurate. We are a movement that is engaging in First Amendment rights. We're engaging in nonviolent protest. And it's, um, it's, it's a tragedy um, that Brandon has made the choices that he has made. Uh, Lisa, you're talking about 23-year-old Bradley Crowder and 22-year-old David McKay, each charged with one count of possession of firearms that were not registered to them, uh, facing That's trial right. right now. Uh, let's go to Carly mm -hmm. Dixon, member of the Austin People's Legal Collective. You all have now documents uh, the testimony of um, Brandon Darby, uh, the recordings that he made. Uh, you have the transcripts of those when he was at meetings. Can you talk further about what you know? Sure, that's correct, Amy. And it's, it is disingenuous for him to say that this was about stopping violence at the last minute. He started informing on his friends um, and the people he works with. Um, these documents from 2007, he mentions dates in 2006. Some of these are outright lies. Some of these are very mundane facts. Um, and he started reporting to the FBI before he'd ever met Dave or David or Bradley. Um, and then did very much take them under his wings. We have uh, the part of these documents that we still need is we have the text messages uh, they sent him. We have sides of conversations they had with him. Uh, we don't have the information of what he was telling them in each case. And uh, that's going to be really important because there is a very, very good case for entrapment here. Mm -hmm. um, we've got an action that him and David were going to pull off. It's very clearly in here that they were talking about doing things together. Um, and so you have to ask the question, if uh, David's in jail and Bradley's in jail, why isn't Brandon and Darby in jail for this crime? Um, and the question that we've come up with is because he instigated this happening and was the mastermind over these two young men. Joe Englund, you're a family friend of Brandon Darby. He's chosen you to be his spokesperson. Uh, your response? Yes. Um, <clears throat> I, I have to go back to my history with Brandon. I've known him since he was a teenager, and I've been party to his, 
his entire intellectual development as an activist and have had many, many discussions about um, violent versus nonviolent direct action, uh, you know, what the role of a citizen is, what rights the citizen has to oppose the government, all these things. But what these women are saying is not consistent with his character. Um, he is a man of tremendous principles and would, I think he would die before he would become a provocateur or entrap people and be involved in an, uh, an entrapment case. Um, Lisa said that everywhere that Brandon has worked, there's been discord. Well, Brandon is um, the kind of activist that really goes where things are happening, where there's tension, where there's, where the action is. Um, I think it's, it would be impossible for those situations not to be filled with stress and, uh, and discord because of the, 